Hi, my name is Tom Shirley. I'm the founder and overseer of The Whimsical Hand, and I'd like to welcome you to this broadcast of Restoration for You. The purpose of our broadcast is to help people understand that Jesus came to make sure that we can have a great life on this planet and be a great life changer for many, many people around us. And today we want to talk about a very important topic. This will be part two in our series on the restoration of peace. But before we get into that, I'd like to invite you to visit our website, thewhimsicalhand.com, and, and get an idea of what we're all about. Read through our material and, and get a look at the people that we're working with and our vision to do something positive in this world to bring eternal change, to help a whole lot of people really get their hearts and their focus with God so that God can do his work through them. So let's get to our teaching today, a restoration of peace. Today I want to talk about a restoration of peace in the body of Christ. Boy, if there is anything that is troubling the church today, it is the, it is the division, it is the strife, it is the, the, the criticism that goes on between people who claim to be children of God and other people that claim to be the children of God. There are publications put out, TV shows put out, internet blogs and, and video blogs put out, speaking down against people who claim to be the children of God. And you know, God isn't for that and God doesn't want that. And so today I want to talk about a restoration of peace in the body of Christ. And I'm going to go a little bit different direction than what you might be expecting. So I want you to jump on board with me and, and let God do some talking to you. I want to start in Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to read a few verses to you. Starting in verse 1, Paul says this. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. That verse 4 is so powerful. Or verse 3, he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Why? Because there's one God, there's one kingdom, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one Lord, there's one Father, there's one body that God has called us to. And God has already unified us, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I want you to notice that it doesn't say, I want you to endeavor to keep the unity of the doctrine. Boy, that is a big catchphrase out there in the body of Christ right now, and it is so misused and abused, and we'll be teaching about that later on down the line. But today, suffice it to say, he wants us to keep the unity of the Spirit. The Spirit is a person talking about the Holy Spirit. And God says, I want you to recognize that I've already unified you with other people in my body. I've already made you all one. And I want you to endeavor or to strive to persevere to keep the unity that I've already established for you in the bond of peace. Did you know that peace and unity are synonymous in, in the way that God is talking about it here? here? Here's the thing. In my family, if my wife and I are at odds, if we have strife, if we're fighting, if we're fussing with each other, guess what? We don't have peace and we're not unified. And God here is saying, I want you to do everything in your power to make peace with the people that are in my family. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul tells us that we are members of the family of God. And we're supposed to have peace there. Now, I want to take you over to John chapter 17, and I want to look at a few verses there with you. And then I want to kind of give you a different concept on this passage that maybe you've never thought of before. In John chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus in his high priest prayer, if you read from chapters 14 through 18, Jesus is, is blessing or giving the benediction to his people just before the crucifixion. He's telling them, he's talking to the Father and telling them in the Father's presence, speaking to the Father in their presence, the blessing that he wants them to be able to operate in. So in John 17, 20, Jesus says this, Neither pray I for these alone, the people that were there with him, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I and them and thou and me, that they may be perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Notice he doesn't, he doesn't say, I want them to walk in oneness so that everyone in the churches will know that I am with them. 
He says, I want the world to know that I am with them. I want the world to know that I am available for them. And the way they're going to see that is because they're going to see them loving each other. They're going to see our people loving each other and walking in oneness, walking in unity with each other. Now, recently my wife and I were speaking to a, a lady about a business opportunity. We're always looking for businesses and trying to find ways to raise funds and make money to, to fund the work that God has given to us. And this particular lady is a Mormon. And I'm not a Mormon. I don't embrace Mormon doctrine or teaching at all. But as we spoke with this lady on the phone, we had a three-way conference call. I was astonished. We hung up the phone, and I told my wife, I said, she speaks in intimacy about the Father. She described to us the way that God speaks to her. She described healing she's received in her body and mind through God. She attributes all the glory to God, all the glory to Jesus Christ. Now, I don't embrace the doctrine, but I embrace the Spirit. Now, on the other hand, there are people in this community, there are people around the world that get upset with me because of my, my doctrinal positions, what I believe or who I talk to or who I fellowship with. And they are not trying to have any kind of experience of this is how God is working in my life. They're trying to tell me this is my doctrine, this is your doctrine, this is where I'm right, and this is where you're wrong. Whereas this lady didn't want to share any of her doctrine with me, she wanted to share her experience in the spirit with me. And you know what? I want to have peace with that person. I want to do all that I can to reach out into her life and to make a meaningful connection with her. I want to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. I don't need to point out the false doctrine she believes. I don't need to point out where I think she's going wrong. I want to connect with her because I want to have a part in her life so that she can come up one level so that the world can see love and can see peace and can be drawn to God. Did you know that God right now is doing a work in the bars and the brothels and the cults that he cannot do in the denominational churches? Mainstream churches can't connect with this because they've built a house of cards out of their beliefs. They decided to separate one from another, and the world looks at that. And I have people all the time ask me, why are there so many denominations? I said, that's a great question. I don't know. God didn't do it. God didn't set it up. God wants there to be unity. God wants us to have peace. God wants us to be a people who are at peace with each other. Now, I'm not going to try to make peace with someone that's at war with me. If they don't want to have peace based on a relationship with God, then I really don't care what they do with their lives. But when I find someone that's looking for peace with God and peace with people, then I'm going to try to connect with them. And that's what God's looking for us to do. Don't let your mind be narrowed down by what you've been taught about who you fellowship and who you, who you show love and kindness to. Reach out to people that are different than you. Reach out to people that are in the wrong kind of a church system or in the wrong kind of belief system. Reach out to them. You'll be amazed at who out there is connecting with God. I've spoken to Catholics that have such a deep intimacy with God. I've spoken to people in Jehovah's Witnesses that seem to have such a relationship with God, and, and they're not trying to peddle their doctrine. They're not trying to convert me. They're trying to tell me about what God's doing in their life. So peace in the body of Christ doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to have peace with all the churches in my community, but it does mean that I'm going to have peace with everyone who's connecting with God, who is born again by the Spirit of God. And you'll be able to tell. Because the spirit of Christ that is testifying inside of you is going to be testifying inside of them. And you're going to connect with those people. So right now, I want to break off all the false teachings that you've received about showing kindness to people that are Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever group that you've been taught against. I want to break off the yoke of blindness that has been placed on the people of God right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I break off this divisive, separatist mentality that has been planted on your people. And, God, I call for an end, an end of this satanic scheme to keep us separate from your true people, your sheep, that have truly been born again just because they're not in the system and just because they don't believe just like us. Thank you, God, for providing us unity and peace in the Spirit. Amen. Amen.